Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Esther. Um, here is a full-length yoga class from our website, online yoga website, EckhartYoga.com. And um, this is one of the thousands that are there. We just want you to experience what it is to do a full-length class rather than just a couple of minutes or five minutes or something like that. Enjoy and come over to EckhartYoga.com if you like it. Namaste. Hi everyone, welcome to Eckhart Yoga. My name is Esther. Um, this class is about winding down and it really depends on when you need to wind down. It can be in the evening after work, it could be in your lunch break and it could certainly be in the morning. Sometimes I need it when I wake up. So um, just feel, whenever you feel you, you reach a certain tension and, and you don't know what to do with it, then this could be your class. Um, you need a bolster straight away or a pack of pillows anything like that blankets and we take child pose over the bolster so if you do not have a bolster it's not the end of the world you can just take a regular child pose but it's just so much nicer to do it with so um, one side of your head on the bolster and just really relax here if you wait into it and take this moment to completely allow what you feel. So when you do this class and you need a wind down, probably could be that you just like the idea of relaxing and that's fine, you just accept, but it could also be you're doing it because you're really tired or winded up. So let that feeling completely bear, be there, accept it fully. Breathe into it and maybe even allow it to increase that feeling. Sink into it. Relax your shoulders, your arms fully. Your spine, your hips, legs. Face, eyes. Jaw. And then turn your head to the other side so that the neck stretches both ways and relax again. And take a moment to feel the space behind your eyes maybe deep within the brain, and see if there's tightness there. Can you relax that more? So that it becomes more soft behind your eyes, more open, spacious. And then gently help yourself up. Move the bolster to the sides. And come into a cross-legged seat. Take your right hand behind you. Take your left hand on the right knee. Inhale, find length. Exhale very gently and softly twist to the right. And then stay here and take a few breaths. So remember, we're not trying to increase our motion. We're trying to release tension. And the best place to do that is finding your edge, but staying a little bit in front of it, leaning into it for maybe only 10%. And breathe. So no more forcing, no more pushing. Being really nice to yourself. Just 
Gently come back and do the same on the other side. Change the cross of your legs there. And again, finding length and then twisting. Find your edge and only lean into it for 10%. So 90% of you is in front, is before your edge. So it's like knocking on the door, not bouncing on the door. And knocking on the door very, very softly. A very polite way of asking, let me in. Breathe. Okay, come back to center. Inhale, lift your arms up high. Interlace your fingers and push your palms up. Keep your belly a little bit strong. Inhale, find length through the side body, through the back. Keep the front ribs a little soft. Bottom of the sternum moves back a bit. Last breath, lift it up. Feel the stretch through the arms and release. Okay, lie on your back. And you might want to use a belt here. So bend your right knee and draw it into your chest. And then begin to bring the right leg up and hold either the belt around the ball of the foot and then holding onto the belt or hold your big toe with your middle index finger and thumb. And feel the stretch here. You can have your left knee bent if this is a little bit more challenging for you on the hamstrings. And please use a belt if you've got trouble straightening your right leg. On the out breath, take your right leg out to the side a little bit. Keep drawing the thigh bone back into the hip socket. Imagine the leg starting in the belly even. And breathe here. So remember, we're just letting go tension. So don't force yourself to go anywhere. Enjoy it. Come back. And then take your leg over to the other side and release your right arm out. Just for a moment. And come back. Release the right leg down. Feel the difference between the two sides. And then bring your left knee into your chest. Fold your hands around it. Relax here for a moment. And then fold the belt around the sole of the left foot and begin to extend your left leg or hold your thumb with your index middle and thumb around. Um, hold your big toe with your index middle and thumb around it. Remember, you can bend your right knee. So if the leg does not straighten, use a belt. And then very softly take that left leg out to the left. Keep grounding through the right. Take your right arm out. And again, not to get anywhere, just to open and to soften. Bring it back up. And take your left leg over to the right. Again, just to open, to release. And come back. Release the left leg. Take a moment to feel the body. Roll onto your side, help yourself up or roll up. And come into a cross-legged position if you can. Come and sit on your knees. If your knees are happy with that. You can always place a pillow between your heels and your buttocks. or Place something behind your knees. Or a little roll 
right underneath here, the ankle, to make it more, um, yeah, possible for that stretch. Inhale, take your arms up. Exhale, eagle arms. Bring your right elbow underneath the left, palms together. Drop your shoulders, lift your elbows, hands away from the face, from the side view, it looks like that. Take a few breaths. And allow the stretch to be in your upper body. One more deep breath. And release, other side. So now your left elbow is underneath. Remember lifting your elbows a bit, dropping the shoulders a bit, hands away from the face. Feeling that stretch in the upper body, top of the shoulders. And let go. You're not trying to feel anything specific. Just allow and let go. Let go any judgment around how you feel. Two more deep breaths. And relax. Roll your shoulders. And use your arms with that. One more time. Take your arms out to the side. Your right hand goes down, palm facing away from you, walk your hand up between the shoulder blades. Inhale, lift your left arm up, palm facing away, drop your hands, maybe the hands meet, maybe you can hold on to your shirt, or you can hold on to a belt that's coming down over the left side. Reach your elbows away from each other, keep your left armpit slightly in, breathe. Stay with the breath. One more breath. Relax. Arms out. Now the left palm faces away, goes down and walks up between the shoulders. Right arm goes up. Palm facing backward, bend your elbow. Hands hold or you hold your shirt or a belt that comes down over the right shoulder now. Breathe. I always keep my belly slightly pulled back here. Right armpit slightly taken in and stretching away through the elbows. And relax. One more time, roll the shoulders, use your whole arms to do that, and roll them back as well. Okay, reverse namaste, I'll show you the back view, keep your belly slightly pulled in, you can take your arms out and turn the palms to the back. Bring your hands together and bring the palms together, like that. If this is impossible, hold on to your upper arms. Oh. Walk your hands up along the spine as much as you can and try and bring the base of the hands together. At the same time, while you keep doing that, you want to bring the fronts of the shoulders back as well. So you ease, you know, the tendency is for the whole shoulders to fall forward, taken back. Holding all that, keeping your spine, your belly slightly pulled back to your spine. So we're not overarching in the spine and breathe. This is a strong stretch for the wrists, the hands, the upper arms, the shoulders, really opening.
stay with the breath. Three more breaths. And gently begin to release. Take a moment to feel your body. You will feel your arms. Maybe move your head a little bit around from side to side. Shake it. And then come into a downward dog. Place your hands down underneath your shoulders. Tuck your toes and push back. First of all, keep your knees bent. Really press into the fingertips, into the full hands. Make the arms nice and long and lengthen your spine. And then when the spine is long, and then when you keep the spine long, you can begin to lower the heels to the floor and stretch the back of the legs more too. If, the sp if you lose the length in the spine because of it, keep those knees bent. So you can really push your bum up to the air. Look forward and step your right foot in between. And then actually place your hands, right hand on the inside of the foot and walk your right foot out a little bit and drop the left knee down. Lizard, so you can begin to bow here. Bow your chest down. For those of you with a little more openness in the hips, you could maybe come onto the forearms. And breathe here. There's not just a collapsing into your joints here. There is a little bit of a pelvic floor left, lift and a drawing in from the left knee to the right foot. And keeping all that stability, then you can sort of find your softness and your depth. You can soften between the shoulders and even take your gaze a little bit forward. Take your chest forward. And come up. Both hands on either side of the front foot. Step back to your downward dog. And then step the left foot forward, left hand on the inside, drop the back knee, inhale. And then exhale, bow, hands on the floor, elbows out, chest down, or for those of you with more openness, forearms to the floor. So again, there's a little stability happening here, left foot, right knee pulling in, pelvic floor, not much, just a little. And then finding that softness and that depth. Taking your chest forward, maybe even your gaze a little. Breathe. Jaw loose. Behind your eyes, soft. And come back up. Frame the front foot with the hands. And now step up to a forward fold. Feet hip width, spread your toes, inhale, press the fingertips down, lengthen, come into a flat back, but keep the back of the neck long a bit, and then fold. Knees bend so you can really hang over your legs, let your head hang fully, arms loose. So there's connection between your belly and thighs. And there's a traction in the upper back. From the body hanging forward. Let it happen. And breathe deep into any tightness or tension that you may encounter. Inhale. Place the fingertips down. Come into a flat back. And then exhale, hands down, step back into your downward dog. And then we're going to come into pigeon. So bring your right knee forward towards the outer right hand or even the outside of the mat. And then walk your left leg back just as far as feels right. Make sure there's no tension in the right knee at all. 
and the tension or the stretch, you feel it in the outer right hip, buttock. Yeah. So if there's tension in the knee, you might need to bring your foot closer to your left hip and point it. If it's close to the hip, you point. Yeah. If you feel no stretch and you're really flexible, maybe you walk your left leg back and you keep your left right foot in place and your foot goes more in line with the knee, but you have to be really flexible in your hips to do that. And you have to, be, uh, have, to have a strong external rotation. If you don't have that, don't go there. So again, no tension in the knee, that's the main thing. And then come down, pressing to the forearms. Keep your chest a little lifted, find length through the neck. And enjoy that stretch on the outer right hip and buttock. And if your leg is, your front of the leg is more parallel to the front of the mat, then you might need to push through the ball of the big toe and keep your outer ankle lifted away from the floor. That's how you keep your knee safe. But if your knee is close to the hip, you can just point your foot. Enjoy that stretch. Let the hips and the buttock marinate in this stretch. And keep your back heel up. You can also point your foot. Two more breaths. Come back up. Tuck your back toes under. And walk your left foot in a little. And from there it's easy to step back into your downward dog. And then we do the other side. Look forward. Now bring your left knee forward. And again, if you know you've got strong external rotation and opening, you can keep your left foot and walk your right leg back. So you get more to parallel to the floor. And then you have to keep your foot flexed and extend through the ball of the feet. Or bring your left foot closer to your right hip, point it, and just be here. Come onto the forearms. So either way, what you want to feel is a stretch in the outer hip of the left side. Breathe. And let the hips marinate now. Stay with the breath and enjoy the stretch in the hips. Jaw loose, soft between the eyes and behind the eyes. And then walk your hands back in. This time, just lean over to the left and allow the right leg to come around to the front. And we are going to come into Janusharsasana. Extend your left leg. Extend both legs and sit straight up. So here, make sure you can sit straight up with a tilt in the pelvis. If not, you have to sit up on a blanket or a pillow so that the hips tilt this way and not that way. Pull the right knee in, sole of the foot on the inside of the left foot, left leg. Inhale, find length, left toes pointing up. And then exhale, just fold over the left leg. Come to a degree that feels good to your body. Push your sit bones down, pull the pelvic floor up from deep inside a bit. Inhale, find length. Through the spine, open your chest, take your shoulders a bit back, and then find your depths. A couple of deep, full breaths.
Gently come back. Walk your hands back, come back up. Change sides. Inhale, find length, ground. Pull from deep inside the pelvic floor up a little bit. And then exhale, fold over the right leg. Keep that pulling up through deep inside the pelvic floor. Inhale, open the chest a little bit, wave through the spine long, and then exhale, find your depth. Breathe. You also engage the right quadricep a little bit, so your front of the thigh is active. One more deep breath. Gently come up. And then we do half Lord of the Fish Pose. So you're going to bring your left leg underneath the right knee to the outside of the right hip a little bit or in front of it. You either place your right foot on the inside of the knee like that, yeah, or if you can on the outside of the leg, but you keep you want to be able to sit up straight. So you can also sit up on a folded blanket. So inside or outside. Inhale, ground everything down. So sit up with a long back. Yeah, if you cannot lift your spine out of your hips, again, foot on the inside, sitting up on a stack of blankets. Place your right hand behind you. Hug the right knee with the left elbow or arm. Inhale, again, first really find that length. And then exhale, twist over to the right. Breathe here. And find the opening. Remember, drawing the spine into the belly. Creating length. More important than the depth of the twist. Breathe gently. One more breath. Gently come back. And we change legs. So with both knees bent, pull the right foot now to the left hip underneath and your left foot on the outside of the right knee or on the inside. Yeah. Left hand behind you, hug your right knee. Inhale, find length. Really ground sit bones down. Pull it up along the spine and then twist. Exhale. And really find that length. More important than the depth of the twist anytime. Breathe. Last breath. Come back. And then we finish with legs up against the wall. So you need a wall space for this. You could use a door. Just make sure nobody comes in halfway. So go ahead and find yourself to a wall. If you still have that bolster or stack of blankets, take it with you because you'll be placing your hips on that. Okay. Okay. So set your bolster up a little bit away from the wall. You just have to figure it out yourself a little bit. Your hips and lower back want to rest on the bolster and your legs want to go up. Yeah? If you don't have a bolster or blankets, don't worry, you can do it flat as well. So you want to land on the bolster when you do this. So kind of sit on it already and then take a little swivel up around so that your legs end up against and your hips on top. So it needs to feel good. If, if the bolster is too far to the wall, you'll just be falling off 
basically to the back. So you have to have um, a tiny little part of the bottom part of your bum hanging off the bolster to balance. And arms can be anywhere you like them to be. Close your eyes. This is also your relaxation. And just release any weight down. Of course, if it doesn't feel right for you or for your back or whatever, just take it away and have your hips flat on the floor with the legs up against the wall or come to a regular Shavasana. I like to place my hands on my belly for some grounding here. And bring the breath into the belly as well. Let go. Now you can stay here for as long as you want. If you want to come off, you can bend your knees. Maybe for a moment, let your knees fall out to the side. And then rolling on to one side to gently find your way off the bolster. Take a moment here to sit and f observe how you feel. And most likely you feel a little bit different now than when you started. And you might have given in to your tiredness or whatever it was you're feeling and you go down and then slowly but surely along the class you might have felt your energy rising and you might be in a different place now. Bring the palms together in front of your heart. May you Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.